Hey friends, David Tenson here. I'm shooting this uh, on my own Facebook page. Uh, usually I do have been doing a, a set of videos for our um, HSP discovery group. If you aren't familiar with the term HSP, it stands for highly sensitive person. It's a, a genetic trait that happens in one in five people where your nervous system works in a particularly different way than everyone else and um, you tend to deeply process things, you tend to be overwhelmed uh, easier than others, you tend to be emotionally attuned or empathetic uh, a lot more and you notice subtleties differently. I've got a whole stack of teaching at davidtenson.com on life as a highly sensitive person. It's not a uh, it's not a bad trait. It's not less. It's just something that is is different. And um, and I've had so many people come to me and say, "Hey, this teaching and this just simple piece of scientific knowledge has so transformed my life because I I thought I would, something was wrong with me and I had to keep changing it. But I've learned that it's beautiful and deep and rich. And so let me encourage you to um, have a look at that. But this is one of the questions we had on our um, closed Facebook group. The question was, how do I navigate um, being highly sensitive? How do I navigate ministry uh, roles in, in that field? How do I navigate um, the, the spiritual aspects, the emotional aspects, and some of the seriousness and heaviness and uh, intensity of being in a church-based ministry roles and these people shared that they were associate pastors and I think worked with youth as well. So I wanted to share some of these keys with you um, in case they may help some more of you uh, out there as well. So um, number one is that um, you have to find self-care that works for you. Now some people are able to run at a particular pace and rhythm for a long time, you know, for 11 months of the year, take a month off and that's it and they're recharged and they can pace themselves. For highly sensitive people, often you need more breaks more often, smaller breaks more often. So it may be that you take a week off every quarter, it may be that you take half a day off every week, it may be that you only work four days a week instead of five, something that works for you. And so you have to find a self-care thing that works for you, um, especially in ministry roles where, uh, you know, it's always on. You you don't get a break from being who you are. You don't get a break often from your position. Um, depending on the size of your church and movement and denomination, you are going to have to run at a particular um, pace, and that's going to be expected of you. Find some self-care that works. and and stick to it and try it and note it and talk to your spouse, partner or family about that as well because it could be that one of you is is, is highly sensitive and attuned this way and the other is not. So find something that's a, a happy medium. Number two is get clarity from expectations of your employees and this goes for anyone but it's really important uh, when you are in particular positions that don't let on, especially ministry and church-based roles. And, and some of you may be watching my work a 40, 30, 40-hour 40 week, 50-hour week, and then be quite involved in your local church as well. Find out what the expectations are of your leaders, of your employees, of your team leaders, and um, navigate, negotiate accordingly, because it's going to be important for uh, you and them, for, you want to do this long term, you want to do it in love, you want to do it with a good amount of energy, so my recommendation is just find out what are your expectations so that I can navigate, that I can um, build my life around something, just, just very practical. Another thing is to um, uh, take, uh, I'm trying to put this in a, in a careful way, everyone works at a, a different rate. Everyone works at a different pace. Everyone works at a different rhythm. And so take note of your own rhythms. Take note of what time of year really works for you, what time of year doesn't, what time of day works for you, what time of day doesn't. When you reach overwhelm quickly, when you burn out, and, and really, I mean, for me, I used to work an office job, and, and the joke used to be in the office that by 3 o'clock, David might as well not be there because I just tend to, the, I could start really early and get to about three and uh, then I was the funny guy in the office because 
I couldn't concentrate. It was just, I don't know if it was programming through finishing school at three o'clock or what it was, but I learned that by three, it's actually best for me. Um, you know, I had the, the privilege and, and honor and capacity to say, well, I'm going to call it a day and go home. And I was more productive in the other hours anyway. And the office was more productive because I left. <laughs> so you have to learn your pace. You have to learn your rhythms, stick to them, try them, note them. And they may even be year by year rhythms. Everyone is has a different grace about them. Everyone has a different rhythm about them. So my recommendation is is to find out what that is for you and deal with that. Uh, the fourth point and final point is you really helps to keep clean spiritually. So uh, in what I do, um, you know, quite a lot, as some of you know, as a prayer minister, I, I sit for hours and hours with people um, praying through stuff, talking, do a lot of listening, a lot of uh, empathy a lot of empathizing and and I I'm super super high on the empathy scale. I recently did a uh, profiling uh, examination something that was um designed at Stanford so it, it had all the ticks and everything and I came up super high percentile of people that are empathetic which I knew but I didn't know how high it was and it did explain a lot. So I need to watch my empathy levels. I need to watch how much I get involved and drawn into that and one of the things I do to manage that is to keep clean spiritually, to um, make sure that I'm just praying simple cleansing prayers, that I'm staying really close to Jesus, that I allow emotions and feelings that go on in my body inform me and not always, um, you know, control me and and so on. I posted something on emotional health the other day. When we get feelings and emotions in and around a lot of people, sometimes, especially for HSPs or people that are empathetic or burden bearers, you tend to absorb other people's feelings and emotions and you don't know unless you've been taught what the difference is. So as Carol Brown says, let those feelings, let those emotions inform you and check, Lord, is this mine? Is it someone else's? What do you want me to do with this? Keep clean spiritually. A couple of years ago, I created a, a cleansing um, prayer for compassion and care workers healing and cleansing prayer for compassion and care workers it's on the davidtenson.com site it's also on the usb stick which is currently got all the teachings and prayer ministry stuff i've done for the last soaking prayers i've done for the last two or three years so um, they're on the website it's on that as well um, i suggest you get that and it's just a 10 minute prayer you can listen to where i pray and we pray over particular things to cleanse ourselves spiritually to some you might think that's a bit of a joke but for those of you who um uh, <laughs> a hsp or have done prayer ministry or sit in amongst other people's trauma which we call having then secondary trauma it's very real and um and it, we need to take care of ourselves finally do come to understand the line between self-care and selfishness self-care is not selfishness okay so be be willing to disappoint people. Be willing to say, I don't have time. That doesn't work for me. Um, I can't see you. Be willing to let people down and let, and you're going to have to disappoint people basically in order to get longevity and sustenance and to look after yourself. As Jesus said, the sick will always be with us. And that's okay. And some of you are called particularly to the sick and the lost and the broken and the hungry and you and I know that they're always there. There's an endless supply of them. But it, it, if you die and you, you just sprint and then die instead of running a marathon, think about the amount of people that you could have reached had you paced yourself, learnt your own rhythms, taken care of yourself, and, um, and took a leaf out of Jesus' book where he made sure that he spent ample time with the father ample time with friends that recharged who he was so i hope they're of some help to you i haven't been able to track any of the comments here while i'm talking but um, i'm going to post this on the hsp site as well the the closed group that we've got if you want any more information on what we've been talking about stack of resource at davidtenson.com feel free to like and share this if you know anybody who might benefit from it god bless have a wonderful day may the lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.